Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's Serie A weekend uh, review which probably will be now the review the last review before the derby I think I will do next week two in, uh, two in one run unless something really really uh, remarkable happens uh, during the midweek fixtures just as a heads up. The title of the video is of course a reference to the Mexican coat of arms, but I thought it very fitting with that uh, luck with it. The Eagles from uh, Lazio beat the Bichone, or the grass snake from uh, Inter, so the eagle devouring the snake. Uh, and what's even more remarkable to, to me is that it was almost completely written, it was almost expected, despite, at least from my part, I, I was watch, watch, fully expecting that Lazio is going to give Inter some trouble. Despite, I think, that Inter is the much better, has the much better squad. And Lazio is still very much a work in progress, but it really worked out uh, beautifully. And I think it is since, um, I think since that fateful uh, 2018 last match day, uh, when, or was 2017, when um, Lazio um, lost to Inter at home, when De Vrij scoring the own goal, um, when then uh, Inter made it back in the Champions League and uh, Lazio did not. I think it was 2018 uh, in a way. Since then Lazio has always uh, gotten at least a point against Inter at home. Really, really, really re uh, remarkable. Uh, other thing that's remarkable that these are two twin sides, at least from the fan base, but Lazio has, has been causing Inter quite some trouble. Uh, and you know, the biggest one, of course, snatching the title of Inter in 2002. Uh, when both sets of fans didn't want Lazio to win. So for me, uh, it's always a remarkable fixture. Um, and yeah, uh, the third, and we'll talk about it when I talk about the game, the third remarkable thing is, of course, uh, that Lazio actually largely outplayed Inter, which I did not expect. I expected that Lazio will, uh, you know, with a counter-attack, maybe they can get at Inter, but they actually outplayed Inter for most of the time, which was really, really uh, the most uh, decisive, uh, or the most damning part of the whole thing. So yeah, uh, Inter is now the first title contender to lose this season after Milan was the first title contender uh, to drop points. So yeah, it swings back and forth, and you know, it all builds up to a really, really big Milan derby of course uh, coming up next weekend um, but you know the other big fixture was of course Juve against Roma uh, which was all about Dybala returning uh, to the club that he he actually wanted to stay and you know and uh, he, he didn't necessarily want to go uh, away from Juve um, and uh, being very very not a much of a factor during the game except when it counted when he with a kind of acrobatic um, a move set up the equalizer which let's be honest was so not deserved because you actually looked good for most of of, of, of time but uh, the one thing and this is something that probably Allegri has to learn now if you get a lead you just keep on going and not hang back other than that Napoli was also stopped uh, in its tracks uh, for, for the first time they meet uh, they played against a team where you definitely can say yep that's a serious team and it actually showed as well. So yeah, it was a really, really, really interesting weekend. Um, and I would say, let's dig in. Um, uh, actually, we actually have to start in Monza, where I actually thought that Monza played not too bad. I mean, I saw some highlights of the, of the game. Didn't play all the bad and were actually very proactive. Uh, got the lead through Colpani, and you thought, ah, maybe this is the first uh, promoted team that will get points. But no, Beto uh, gets an equalizer just a few minutes after Monza took, took the lead, and uh, lay, lay down Idogi at that point then gets the deserved win for Udine, who are enjoying a rather good season so far and are one of the big winners of the match day with an away win as i said lazio inter uh, i said it in my, in my short and i had already a little bit in introduction um while i thought inter started out a little bit more uh pressing forward it was lazio absorbing them and then uh, hitting them first on the car, car contract until they actually started to control the game. And for me, the most remarkable thing, and I hinted of it in the short, but you know, within one, one minute, you cannot really say it that much. Um, it was that every time there was a drinking break, and it was kind of this uh, uh, hot, humid evening, so uh, you need to have this drinking break. 
But Sarri definitely used this to coach the team because every time after the drinking break, Lazio came out a whole lot better. They made the right adjustments. And um, at that point, then Lazio were in firm call control, should have probably taken the, the, the um, uh, lead or, or earlier, but it was the Milinko Vosavic, who I still, for, for me, still a uh, mystery that this guy is still at Lazio. Uh, he, he gets a cross in and Felipe Anderson heads it in 1 0. And it was totally deserved at that point. After the half, I think Lazari had a pretty big chance to double, to double the lead. But then it was Inter that had already made some, some, some adjustments. Um, they got a free kick on the right side. And that free kick, uh, Lazio did not defend very, very well. And then I think it was a dump freeze. Um, was it a shot until goal over, over there? But they were loud. The row, uh, touched it. It seemed to me first like a goalkeeping mistake, which it may have, have been. I have, I have, have to say... Uh, I was not very um, enamored with the Lazio goalkeeper. He seemed to be a constant uh, source of calamity. And at that point, I really thought that Inter, the momentum will now shift towards Inter. And for a short period, it did. However, Lazio still dug in and could absorb again the pressure uh, of Inter. Where I I thought that La, uh, that La, Lu, Lu, Lukaku was pretty much not much of a factor anymore, and you know with them bringing on Luis Alberto and Pedro again right just before this uh, drinking break, it, but the signs were already late that Lazio is actually going for the jugular here. Yes, Inter also made very um, proactive change with Jaco Darmian and Golsens coming in for Lukaku, Dumfries, and Di Marco. I, it was a little bit too late. And then he said, he come, comes with La, Lazari. And at that point, Lazio had asserted back control. And they reward themselves after, I think it was a corner kick by Pedro, who put, played it out to Luis, Luis Alberto, who I made mean, a wonderful shot. I mean, what a great goal that was up in, in, in the corner. Maybe it took even a very slight deflection, but I don't want to take away from this. It was such a wonderful goal. Absolute worldy. Um, to give Lazio the lead, and then they could try how how how, how they might. Then it was Lazio always hit, 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 hit them and then counter attack and immobile setting up Pedro to make it three one fully deserved lead. And as I said, what what really so surprised me is how Lazio outplayed Inter. This is now a sign to come that Lazio is actually a team that could challenge for at least top four. Maybe we have to see. It's still very early in 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 the season. But to me, I think the most uh, outstanding was how ineffective especially Lukaku was in that game. I hear not that he is injured. He may be out for even for the derby. Uh, so maybe that played a part in it. But uh, it, it looked very disjointed uh, in, 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 in attack up front for Inter. But it was also down to the really good tactics by Lazio. And as I said, I always said at the beginning, uh, I'm sorry, they were not defensive. However, um, once they asserted car control, Lazio were a really well-functioning unit. And that has to be applauded. Um, another team that might turn out into a well fun function you is Torino getting a 2-1 win at Cremonese. Didn't see much of it, but I think Torino uh, is one of those two teams not, uh, near, near the top of the table, if not the top of, uh, of the table, that actually could do some damage. Will they Watch this space. Juve Roma started off with a bang with a Vlahovic free kick. I mean, boom. Luis Alberto's goal was better, but the Vlahovic free free kick was, was my second most favorite. Was it? Might have been in my third favorite, favorite, favorite goal this uh, weekend. I, 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 I would say second. Really great shot. And Roma not present in the first half. Juve just slicing like a hot knife through butter through them. Uh, and playing really, really well. Dominating mid midfield, pushing Roma left, left, left and right. And if uh, Locatelli's uh, goal would have stood, it was a handball in the builder, but it was far away. But okay, this is the Italian line. I think Roma is not coming back from that. But again, he uh, hinted already. What up until the 65th, you know, I, I would say about up until the equalizer, there were no signs for me that Roma is gonna get back into the game. Juve had this game firmly under control. The only thing that I have have to say, Juve should have gone for the jug juggler in the second half. That uh, that's the only thing that that I could fault Juve for. And then it comes as, as, as sugar. It was, I think it was a corner uh, that was then um, that girl found its way to 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 Dybala, who acrobatically gets it onto the head of Abraham, and it's one one. 
literally out of nowhere. And then suddenly Roma was in the game and did a little bit to deserve uh, their point. But yeah, Mourinho says it right in the first half. He was not proud of this team. And yeah, I think... Well, I found then the, you know, the substitutions of Allegri again a little bit lacking. Um, I think this was a building performance for Juventus and there might be more things to come our way. Right after Milan against Bologna, I... The Getalara getting a first start, playing really, really well. I firmly enjoyed his his play, and especially the way he set up uh, Leao. It was brilliant. Although, honestly, Leao should, 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 should score then a second one too. So uh, that was all fine. I think it was a performance against a Bologna team. Bologna never was really in the game. Bologna was... Uh, we have we have in Germany we say a grau mouse a gray mouse uh, is for a team that is not really um, threatening for a title but also never really in a relegation. It's just somewhere in in, in between and no one really cares much about it. Now I don't want to uh, diss the, uh, Bologna because uh, a I think Bologna is a very beautiful city and for me. Bologna the team is also one that belongs in Serie A, but they were as neutral as this picture of the gray mouse is. So uh, I think they had one chance of, of, of there. So Milan's once they took took a lead, I never had the feeling that Milan might lose it. Although we know how quick it can go. Um, so that was all possible, possible, possible to me. Also, if you saw Giroud's goal, Leao assists him, and Leao finally asserting himself on a game. So I have nothing bad to say. It was a routine win. All that that they needed. The one thing that I'm really really sour is. I understand that if a third jersey that is in a different shade and whatever, and maybe yeah, uh, you can work this out in games where you cannot wear, wear your red and black or your um, white. But playing this at home just annoys me. That jersey is ugly. I mean, I said to my wife, especially when they walked out in the, in, in the tracks, they look like soldiers. It looks like an army company or whatever going out there. Um, and you know, also the numbers not very legible because they only had the, they are black with an outline on a dark green jersey or olive green or whatever this is. Yeah, it did not look like Milan. I mean, when they played last season with the black third jerseys at home, at least this looked like Milan because uh, there's at least the club colors. And yes, there's a black on there, so technically there's a club color on there. But this did not look like Milan. This is a jersey that you should only use in rare occasions, but don't shove it down our throats. I don't want to do another jersey review, but I, I think it's ugly. I may even buy it though. I don't know. I have to see. Uh, it's one that definitely divides op opinion. As I said, um, like this bluish jersey that they had two seasons ago, which I really wanted to have then, but never got. Uh, this might be in a way uh, because it's special, but I don't want to see this on a regular basis. On the other side, I think the game also allowed Pioli to shuffle around a little bit. Hartley came on, Pobega came, uh, came, came on, Balotturi and Gabi came on. So a lot of the second string players got some minutes and it was all uh, easy. And again, I want to Giroud scoring another world-class volley, uh, but only the third best goal on this, after, uh, on this weekend. So yeah. Except for the jerseys, very happy with, with Milan now. They have a tough schedule uh, ahead. But, you know, in a week from now, we, m we know probably a lot more about Milan uh, than we do now. But at the moment, it looks like um, a squad that still is finding itself, but it looks solid in a way. Uh, at the same time, Spezia and Sassuolo played out an entertaining 2-2, uh, where I think Spezia took the lead and Sassuolo the lead, and then it, it was a draw. Uh, on Sunday... Uh, Salernitana beating Sampdoria 4-0. That Sampdoria, I said it, I'm a little bit worried about them. I really hope they're not getting relegated, uh, but that's not a good good, good, good performance. Um, at the same time, uh, Atalanta beating Hellas away from home. And uh, also, uh, Hellas, let's see. I really, I think this might also be a team that could find themselves a teeny bit in trouble. I was really looking forward to Fiorentina against Napoli because this is the first time that arguably Napoli play a proper opponent. Because I don't know how good Hellas is, but 
it also showed Fiorentina were a proper opponent that, and that despite them having to play uh, a European night on Thursday it was so funny because I thought Napoli had to be a goal threat but I found that Fiorentina is a much more stable team and they pressed Napoli they really pressed and pressed them out of the game more or less uh, I just wish that they would have uh, that Fiorentina would have had a little bit more cohesive actions going forward. Uh, Jersey matchup was also rather odd or purple against uh, light blue, but I actually didn't mind it. I, I, I actually thought thought it was I like both sets of jerseys quite some with an hour now Napoli jersey being an early favorite of mine already. There was a goal that Osiman scored, but that was then rightly taken off for offset. Although at first you didn't really get it, but. I have to give huge props to Fiorentina and I really thought that late in, in, in a game that they actually might snatch a win uh, there, which probably would not have been un unreserved. And Napoli missed his history of starting three years in a row with three wins. No, they have also been taken aback. And then the last result of here, Lecce, uh, first promoted team to snatch a point. Empoli, uh, against Empoli 1-1, I think Lecce actually was a little bit closer to the win there as well. So. If we look here at the uh, uh, standings, we have a whole bunch of teams on seven points. Napoli, Milan, Lazio, Atalanta, Torino, Roma, all on seven points, all good starts. And I would add Inter and Juve to the whole thing. So it's very, very tight. Uh, but we already see the cream rising a little bit on top. Uh, because, you know, uh, with Inter and, La and Lazio playing and Juve, you know, two, two draws they're finding their footing. Maybe you can add even fewer Fiorentina, fewer, fewer, fewer but I think that the top nine will probably stay in the top, in, in, in the top nine. We already see on the bottom, there are a whole bunch of teams that have not uh, picked up any points yet. And those are exactly the teams where I have some worry. Maybe Salernitana should be in, in as well, but you never, 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 never know. Uh, again, it's early doors. Uh, we see that the title race is already a little bit closer again. Uh, Inter is now only 3rd, 38, Milan 27, Napoli 13. But again, very early in the season. For me, it's more in interesting to look again at the bars with the different differences of who is really, really good. And, uh, you know, more, more surprising, we see Torino's bar is really, really uh, big out there. Atalanta and Lazio also rather on the positive side and on the bottom, it's very, very negative overall. Uh, as for Uzbekistan, again, not much change except a little bit on the bottom. The title race is probably a little bit closer and I think a lot will hinge on the Milan Derby coming up. But before that, we have Milan playing Tuesday after, uh, late afternoon at Sassuolo uh, and uh, Inter then in the evening at home at Cremonese. So it should be kind of warmer games. I mean, Milan love going back to Sassuolo given what happened last May, May there. So this time around, I don't think Sassuolo will roll over just like they did uh, that af afternoon. Um, of the other games, you know, I... As I want to see what Lazio can do against a uh, Sampdoria team that is in real, real trouble. And Udine Fiorentina is, is an early, early sleeper already. Uh, we have also Southern Derby between Napoli and Lecce. You have to play against Spezia. Should be an easy win, but never is. And then Atalanta Torino. That is probably the pick of the bunch of all these games because I think both teams could play a role this season for sure. Um, and then on the weekend, we have a super Saturday. Fiorentina Juve, enough said. Milan Inter, biggest game, and then we have Lazio Napoli. I mean, those three games, uh, strap yourself to it to see it, watch Serie A. I think I will not be watching much Bond Bundesliga uh, there because those are really, really, really good games there with a lot of rivalry in there. Kind of makes the rest of the weekend not so great, and it's all because the Champions League will start then a little bit later. Um, Monza Atalanta? Maybe. Let's see. Let's see how it how it's going. In any case, that's it for me for uh, this week from Serie A. As I said, unless something really remarkable happens, I will not do a Serie A review video. I probably will record shorts with some thoughts, but let's see how it goes. Uh, please drop a line below if you want to um, tell me something or you want to add something to what I've said. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!